Konnichiwa, Watashi wa Deriban des. I'm going to be doing bass lines and licks for you today from the 60s, the 70s, 80s, and even now. Um, I hope you will enjoy uh, these patterns and will practice them. I hope that you will uh, spend time in listening to some of the musicians that I've named today on the videotape. Um, great bass players, great music, and I was influenced by many of these people. Um, the most important thing is to practice and take the patterns that, that we play today for you and, and do them longer and, and really get into playing bass lines. So thank you very much for, for getting my, uh, my videotape and I'll see you soon. Now I'm going to do some patterns for you today and playing with me is Scooter Warner. These next few patterns are based on 60s R&B soul styles. This first one will be Motown flavored pattern. One, two, three. Now we're going to do pattern two, and it's going to be a little bit more advanced. One, two, three, huh? Pattern three is uh, based on a James Brown feeling, but I'm going to do my version of something similar to some of the records that he recorded. One, two, three, oh. The next pattern is a variation of the previous pattern. One, two, three, four.
Okay, this next pattern is a Bootsy influence James Brown pattern. One, two, three. <laughs> Welcome to part two. We're going to do uh, patterns based on the late 60s, early 70s, and the first pattern is going to be sort of a Chuck Rainey style, um, old school style. I'm going to do my version of uh, his, his playing. One, two, three, four. Uh.
next pattern, we're the next two patterns we're going to do are going to be based on Philadelphia soul, and the first one's an up tempo feel. One, two, three, uh. <laughs> This next pattern is based on Southern Soul. Um, Duck Dunn was a major influence of mine, and uh, this is my idea of something that he would play. Um, uh, we're going to call it Southern Soul Jerry Pattern. One, two, three, uh. <laughs> The next pattern is based on the Isley Brothers style, and I'm using uh, a muted uh, position on my, my right hand, and I'm, I'm, I'm plucking two strings at the same time, like this. And if you watch closely, and then I use three fingers on the second part, on the second part of the pattern. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Next patterns are based on Sly and the Family Stone or Sly Stone. Um, Larry Graham played with them and, and several great bass players. And these next uh, patterns are based on uh, some of the music that he recorded. And I'm going to do my version of these styles. One, two, three.
This next pattern is going to be based on Larry Graham's style, with sly, and I'm going to slap. Um, I'm going to use just two fingers, my thumb and my first finger. One, two, three, up. I think the most important part of funk and grooving is space and to play the root of the song. And um, that pretty much sums it up, space.
Welcome to part three. We're going to do patterns based on 70s funk, one of my favorite time periods of uh, bass playing. Okay, and we're going to start off with a um, funkadelic feel. George Clinton, Bootsy Collins, around this time period, okay? One, two, three, uh. <laughs> On many funk records, bass players use envelope filters. Um, one of the most famous uh, effects sounds was from Bootsy Collins. I'm using a Qtron today. It's an envelope filter, and I'm going to play a bass line based on his style, but it'll be my style, my, my style. OK, here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> The next pattern is based on uh, Vernon White, who was a major influence on me, and we're going to do our sort of an earth, wind, and fire groove. Um, it could also be considered a funk fusion groove from the 70s, too. Okay? One, two, three, uh. <laughs> This next pattern is also going to be similar to Verdine, um, a little bit of Jocko feeling, um, funk fusion, uh, and I'm going to do my version of all the people that, that did, played this style during this time period. One, two, three. <laughs> This next pattern is going to be a uh, gospel feel, um, Larry Graham style. So I'm going to slap it and uh, check it out. One, two, three, up. Uh. The next pattern is going to be based on uh, Gap Band style. Um, Robert Wilson was the bass player. He's one of the brothers of the Gap Band. And I'm going to do, uh, they used to use uh, Mini Moog 
a bass synthesizer and electric bass together, but I'm going to just play my bass my way. One, two, three, uh. This next uh, pattern is based on a group called Slave that I used to listen to in the late 70s. Very funky bass lines. Um, the bass player was named Mark, and he was uh, a great influence on me. So we're going to do something um, based on Slave's feel, and I'm going to do my version of this. Okay? One, two, three. <laughs> Um, I think the most important thing is to play with the drummer. To The bass and the drums have to be married together. So um, that's, that's how I conceptualize playing funk music. Almost any style as a bass player is to play with the drummer very close and allow space for the, the rest of the music. For me, Um, doing music is an honor. It's, it's incredible to be around talented people, and to play with them. Um, playing with Shaka, there have been great moments with her on stage, Roberta Flack, my sister Catrice, um, playing on records and uh, playing on tracks uh, for Bette Midler and for Whitney Houston. I mean, musically, it's been an honor for me. So uh, I've been very blessed to be a bass player, and I'm sure there'll be more memorable moments to come. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Welcome to part four. It's based on 70s, funk, late 70s and early 80s. Um, we're going to start off with patterns influenced by the Brothers Johnson. Louis Johnson was one of the great and is one of the great uh, thumpers, slappers in the world. And uh, this first pattern, I'm going to use mainly my thumb and do something similar to what he would do. One, two, three, uh. The next pattern is going to be based on Lewis Johnson again, but with octaves, I'm going to use the thumb and the first finger. Okay, and it's going to be my version of what Lewis would play. One, two, three. This next pattern is based on uh, Cameo, a group that we, that I played with actually when I was younger, and uh, they influenced a lot of my my, my bass playing. Very funky. I'm going to use uh, my thumb and my first finger together in unison, um, and we're going to do something that that's called funky. Actually, here we go. One, two, three, ah. Okay, this is a disco pattern based on uh, the stylings of Bernard Edwards of Chic. Also on this pattern, I'm using my thumb um, like a guitar pick. That's it, really slow. And uh, when I play with the drummer, I'll do it faster. There you go, that's something to practice. One, two, three. This next pattern will also be a disco style where I'll use uh, both fingers and uh, Scooter will play a straight disco beat with me. One, two, three. <laughs> Thank you. 
Washington, D.C., there was a music that was formed there called Go-Go. It's R&B, and it's a mixture of funk and shuffle, and uh, great drummers played this style, Juju House, Ricky Wellman, and Chuck Brown is considered the godfather of Go-Go music. I heard him in the late 70s. We're going to do uh, something similar to this beat, and I'll play my style, Go-Go style. One, two, three. I'm going to do for you a synthesizer bass pattern um, similar to mini moog sound. I'm going to play muted with my fingers, my hand, excuse me, my hand over the, uh, the back pickup. I'm going to use my thumb to create this sound, sort of like very, very dead, but similar to mini moog. Okay? One, two, three, uh. I hope you enjoyed watching the tape and you learned something. Um, this is the basic, the basis uh, of, of some bass playing. There are many styles, many ideas. I hope you will listen to everyone and you will practice, practice, practice. Thank you very much.